Hi, welcome to another episode of Thinking Inside the Box on Noah's Ark. Today, I'm going to share five tips on how to incorporate some of the analog recording workflows of the past into a modern DAW workflow. So, let's start with tip number one, commit on record. So what I mean by committing on record is that I usually apply the EQ and compression settings in the way in while tracking because that allows me to you know, make creative decisions right away and without postponing any of that later. The problem and the danger of postponing those decisions later is that at some point you're going to have too many decisions to make and it's going to lead to uh, less productivity. It's good to have a clear vision from the way in on how you want the record to sound like. So if you did make some drastic changes in the way in and it's irreversible, well, that's going to be a good experience for the future because you're going to know that these are the settings that kind of destructively alter the sound and you know how to not do that mistake again later on. So that's my first tip, commit on record. Tip number two, edit like tape. In the old days, in the analog days, well, you couldn't edit that much because it was time consuming and really tedious to you know, actually splice the tape and put it back together and you didn't know if it was exactly in the right spot and you just had one shot to make that correct edit. So what it did is that it pushed musicians to record the right performance from the way in. And although I edit you know, big chunks usually at a time, I never do small edits of like guitar solos with small bits and pieces from different takes because that's gonna remove some magic in the performance. And there's something inherently natural about having mistakes in the performance and that way you can connect more on a human level when you listen to the music because mistakes are part of our DNA. So I encourage you to not edit too much and record full performances as much as you can to keep the overall feeling. So that's my tip number two. Tip number three, mix in mono. Mixing in mono is really useful when uh, you're starting to build up your mix because if you do your level balancing and you're EQing uh, while monitoring in mono. It gives you much more space after, later on to work on when you switch to stereo because you've gained so much space and you try to fit all the instruments into one dimension that when you're gonna spread out, you're gonna see that there's a lot more space to work with. So the, um, the mix is gonna be much more clear. So I really encourage you guys to start doing some filtering and EQing in mono so that you can start to carve the different spaces in the frequency spectrum for the different instruments. And then you can start to spread out. So that's my tip number three, mixing in mono. Tip number four, process like outboard gear. I like to think of my plugins as you know, actual outboard gear in the DW. So whenever I use an 1176 or an LA-2A, I'm gonna try to think that I only have you know, a couple of them on the rack and I'm going to freeze or commit the processing that I put through those plugins. The philosophy behind that is that in the old days, you didn't have, you know, unlimited amount of outboard gear and still you can make great records by, you know, summing signals and putting them through the same processor all at once with, you know, using submixes and uh, using the same sends. It often amazes me how good, you know, the dark side of the moon sounds using only one reverb you know, which is the EMT-140 plate. They didn't need to have, you know, loads of different types of reverbs and processing to make a great record. So another advantage of processing, like outboard gear, is that you can also free up DSP. You know, I use universal audio plugins and I can mix any kind of track because um, I can just freeze and commit all the processing I do. I don't really need any more than two cores to process things. So that's my fourth tip on processing uh, like outboard gear basically. Tip number five and final tip, mix down under a time limit. Often people think that the more time you have the more productivity and the, the better the result is going to be. Well usually it's inversely correlated. You know back in the days artists used to have record contracts for two albums per year and then they were still able to make great records. So I think in a way, the time limit pushed them to create something greater and putting all their efforts in a short span of time. So, you know, in the old days, you had the desk for the night and you had to actually come up with a mix at the end of the, that session. And when you were done, you had to recall everything and 
put everything back to zero to normalize the console. So it was really hard to have the same settings in another day or get the, exactly the same sound. So what I like to do is right, you start mixing session and then at the end, you're just printing the result and see how far you can get or how good it can sound. Because in the end, if you have too, mu too much time to spare, well, you're gonna start to think that the mix is never gonna be good enough. And it's hard to know when to finish, I think working with that mindset is going to allow you to do much more productive work in the end. So that's my fifth tip. So here there are five analog workflow tips for the modern DAW user. So I hope you liked the video and if you did, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks videos in the future. And if you'd like to share another analog you know, workflow tip for viewers of this channel, please do comment in the section below and add Love to highlight some of the best. I'll see you next time for another video.